Before we get started building any geometry in Revit, let's take a quick tour of the user interface. So I want to treat this like the first time you visit a friend's house. They usually take you around and they kind of show you where everything is. So let's just take this opportunity to take a really quick tour of the major elements of the Revit user interface. Now, what you see on your screen might vary slightly from what I have, but the overall pieces of the interface should remain pretty consistent. And that has something to do with maybe whether you're working in Revit LT or the full version of Revit or the specific file that you happen to have open. All right, so let's start with the file menu. So right over here on the upper left-hand corner is a file menu. And as you might expect, it is your file management tools. So we have tools to create files, to open files, save them, export them, print them. So anytime you wanna do some file management type operation, think file menu. Now I'm gonna move my mouse away from the menu and just kind of click an empty space to dismiss that menu. Directly above the file menu, we have a bank of icons that are all grouped together. This is called the quick access toolbar. Now, some of the commands we just saw in the file menu are repeated here, like open and save and print, but there are other commands available on this toolbar as well. And one of the unique aspects of this toolbar is you can customize it. So if you find a command that you want to use frequently and you wanna have quick access to, you can right click it and add it to the quick access toolbar. And that allows you to treat that kind of like your my favorites menu. Beneath the quick access toolbar is the ribbon and the ribbon is organized into these tabs. And each tab groups related commands together by usually discipline or overall function. And then they're further organized into panels and then finally buttons. So for example, I have this build panel right here. And on the build panel, I have several different types of objects that I can create, things like walls, doors, or windows that are all kind of grouped together under that one heading. Now beneath the ribbon is the options bar. Now it's currently blank, so let me run a command. I'm gonna click the wall command and notice that the options bar now populates with several different toggle switches and settings that I could configure for this command. Now what's available on that options bar will change depending on what command you currently have active. So if I come over here on the ribbon and click this modify tool, that's how you can cancel the current command. That sort of resets the entire interface so if I click another command like this column command here, for example, but notice that the options are a little bit different than the ones that we saw for the wall command. I'll click the modify tool to cancel out of there again. Beneath the options bar and to the left-hand side of my screen, we have two palettes that are docked on the left-hand side. We have the properties palette and the project browser. Now I have both of these palettes in their default location on the left-hand side of the screen. Yours might be somewhere else on your screen or they might even be on a totally different monitor. And it's also possible for them to not be displayed at all because there's a small X here and they could actually be closed. So if you've looked around on your screen and you can't find either the project browser or the properties palette, you probably wanna turn both of those on because we're gonna use them quite frequently. So in order to do that, go to the view tab here. And then on the far right, there's the user interface dropdown. Just make sure that both project browser and properties are checked. When you do that, those two palettes will appear somewhere and then you can drag them around on screen and put them anywhere you like. I'm gonna keep mine docked to the left-hand side of the screen like you see on my screen here. Now the properties palette will adjust to whatever it is you happen to be doing on screen. So if I go back to architecture and I click that wall tool again, you'll see that the properties palette has changed to reflect the fact that I'm about to create a wall. So I'll get similar options to what I see on the options bar. Now, if I click the modify tool and instead I come over here and I select something like this roof and I'll just sort of click right on it to select it, notice that the properties palette will react to that selection now and show me properties that pertain to the selected element, the roof. If I click that modify tool one more time, not only will that deselect the roof, but it will reset the properties palette to showing the properties of the currently active view, which is a 3D view in this case. So it in the case of both the options bar and the properties palette, the idea is you just want to pay attention to them because what they show you will change frequently depending on whatever it is you happen to be doing at any given moment. Now, the project browser is the way that we navigate around the project. Revit projects are organized into multiple views, and we're going to look at that in more detail in the future. But basically, the way it works is you find a view that you want to work in, you scroll through, you locate it, you double click it, and that will open that view. 
and that becomes the active view. So think of the project browser almost like the table of contents for your project. Now, across the bottom of the screen is the status bar, and it's organized into a couple different areas. On the left, we have little messages that will appear that kind of give you feedback as to whatever it is you're doing currently. So at the moment, I'm not doing anything. So Revit's giving me feedback on how I can make a selection. If I move my mouse on top of some existing geometry, like say this curtain wall right here, you will see the curtain wall highlight under my cursor, but it will also tell me about that curtain wall on the status bar. If I move my mouse over this wall instead, the message will change to talk about the wall or this roof or one of these windows. So you don't have to click those items. You don't have to select them. Just simply moving your mouse over them changes the message on the status bar to tell you a little bit about the object that you're about to select. Now, next to that is a bank of icons that are a little bit more advanced that we're going to skip over for now. And on the far right, we have the selection controls. And it's a little easier to kind of explain what all of those are by using this little drop down menu right here beneath the modify tool. So there are different classifications of objects available in Revit. And by toggling those switches, you can control whether or not those kinds of elements can be selected. Now, for the moment, we're going to leave all the default choices selected there. But by toggling on those different switches in different ways, you can filter out different classes of element. Now, finally, I'd like to talk briefly about navigation, and we've got a toolbar on the far right to help us do that. So as I move closer to this toolbar, you'll see that it goes from being kind of dimmed out to full intensity. And right here on the toolbar is a small drop-down menu that has several different ways that we can zoom the screen. So in a program like Revit, you often find that you have to get in and get a little bit closer and magnify the screen, and you often want to step back as well and kind of get an overall look. So the zoom commands allow you to do that. Now the currently active command will have a checkbox next to it. So that's currently zoom in region. So if I click the icon here for zoom in region, that will run the command and give me a small magnifying glass. And then I just click two opposite corners of a rectangle on screen and it will fill the screen with that rectangle. Now if I click the command a second time and pick to new points, it'll zoom in even closer. Now, if I want to back up again, I can go to previous pan or zoom. And you can do that several times. It remembers about the last 10 or 12 zooms and pans that you've done. And so you can keep stepping back through them using that previous zoom and pan. But there's several other zoom options here, things like zoom out two times, which is fairly self-explanatory, or zoom to fit, which will just fill the screen with all of the available geometry in the view. Now there's also zoom all to fit, but that only works when you have multiple views open on screen. And because I only have one view right now, we're not really gonna see any difference between zoom all to fit or zoom to fit. And then there's one last one here that's grayed out. That's zoom to sheet size. So in views that have scale, like floor plans or elevations, whatever the scale is, when you choose zoom to sheet size, it will react to that scale and zoom in accordingly. Now, those commands are useful and helpful, but perhaps the easiest way to zoom and pan is to just use the wheel on your mouse. So if I roll the wheel down, it will zoom out. And if I roll it up, it will zoom in. If I hold the wheel down and drag, I can move the mouse around and scroll the screen. So that allows me to focus in on an area and then I could zoom in a little closer. And so you can do a lot of the same zooming and panning that you're able to do with the toolbar just using the wheel on your mouse. And it's often a more convenient way to do it. Now, the last thing you should know about the way the zooming of the wheel works is you don't have to select anything, but wherever your mouse is on screen, it will keep that piece of the view on screen as you roll the wheels. Notice if my mouse is near this light fixture beyond the window, as I zoom in or out, it keeps that light fixture in the view. If I move over here to this window and I zoom in or out, it keeps that window in the view. So if you want to control what the centering of the screen is, just move your mouse slightly before you start to roll the wheel. But remember, you can always drag the wheel to recenter the screen that way.
So now I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable with the overall user interface in Revit and also have some sense of how you can navigate on screen. I welcome you to continue exploring the UI to get more comfortable with its various parts and pieces.